I know how sad it is in the morning when you try to make matcha latte at home and it just sucks. So today, in this video, we're gonna help you solve that problem by quickly go through how to pick the best matcha for you, proper storage, the proper tools to make better matcha, and also preparation techniques. So let's jump right in. Hi there, I'm Kimi, your matcha crazy friend and a certified tea sommelier. Welcome to my little cozy matcha cafe. If you enjoy videos like this showing how to make tasty matcha drinks, make sure to poke the like button so I will make more videos like this so you can make matcha drinks at home. So right now, please poke the like button. So step one, pick the right matcha powder for you. Many people just choose to chip out and get the cheapest matcha on the market. And this is why your matcha never tastes good. And lots of people didn't know that different grades of matcha can make a difference in texture, taste, and the quality overall. Firstly, you should be getting a ceremonial grade matcha instead of a culinary grade matcha for your matcha latte at home. Because ceremonial grade matcha is usually greener in color and finer in texture. Ceremonial grade matcha is generally served at traditional Japanese tea ceremony and that has very little to minimal bitterness and that will make it great for your matcha latte at home. But there are tons of brands out there offering ceremonial grade matcha. How to tell a good matcha from a bad matcha? So first of all, color is everything. So we look at the color. The rule of thumb, the greener, the better. That means it's from first harvest tea leaves and it's fresh and properly stored. Second of all, we look at the texture. Is the matcha really, really fine? That's from slowly stone ground powder, not sandy, not coarse. The sandy texture is generally from a machine miller that goes on the high speed. So it doesn't produce the fine, smooth texture for, for the matcha. And then we, we look at the smell. When you open that bag of matcha that you just bought, does it smell fresh? Does it smell like grass, like a fresh mount long? If it smells really fresh, it means it's been properly stored. And that's the indicator for a good matcha powder that you have. And finally, when we taste the matcha, how does it taste? How do you like it? High quality matcha generally have a taste of umami, savory, and very minimal bitterness. And some matcha come with a natural sweetness as well. Step two, proper storage. Now you have invested in a good quality matcha, and now we need to properly store it. Without proper storage, matcha quality will decrease very quickly. There are three points we need to pay attention to when we store matcha. First, light. Light will make matcha oxidize faster than usual, and the color will change when you expose matcha powder to light. When you store matcha powder, make sure you don't use a glass jar to put your matcha powder in. We recommend putting matcha powder in a vacuum sealed bag or an airtight container. Number two, heat. Matcha is also very sensitive to heat. So make sure, especially during the summer month, we recommend keeping your matcha in the fridge or a cool, dry space, like your kitchen cabinet. Because when you expose to heat, the matcha color will change drastically too. And number three, humidity. When moisture gets into your matcha, the matcha will clump up and that makes it difficult for you to whisk. So we recommend that you keep your matcha powder in an airtight container to prevent the moist getting into your matcha powder. If you find any value so far in this video, make sure you poke the like button and leave matcha in the comment for the YouTube algorithm. It truly helps with growing this channel so that I can make more videos like this for you. So poke that like button and comment matcha in the comment below. Now let's carry on. Step three using the right tools. For best results, I recommend using a bamboo whisk 
also called chasen, and a tea bowl. They are very versatile. You can make hot latte and iced latte with those two simple items. If you really don't have a bamboo whisk, like when you are traveling or when you're outside, there are also other ways of making a matcha latte. You can use a blender, you can use a shaker or even electric frother. Bamboo whisk is the best because it has so many little thin bristles that will break apart the matcha powder and make it into a smooth paste. Fork or spoon doesn't have enough bristles that can break the matcha powder apart. Another important tool to make a smooth tasty matcha latte is to have a sifter. I cannot address this important enough is that a sifter can break the clump in your matcha powder. Whether it is from transportation or it is from storage, there's nothing a good sifter cannot solve. Step four, the right preparation. The first step is to soak your bamboo whisk. When you soak the bamboo whisk the, in hot water, it will soften up the bristles so it's unlikely to break when you are whisking matcha. And then we need to sift the matcha. So you put the matcha powder on top of the sifter and then gently push through the sifter. And now you have a super smooth textured matcha powder in your bowl. Make sure your sifter is dry so the matcha won't stick onto your sifter. And after we sift the matcha, now we need to add the water into your matcha. Water temperature is make or break for your matcha. You don't want to use boiling hot water because that will destroy the nutrients in your matcha as well as alter the taste in your matcha powder. You want to use warm water, not too cold either because when you use cold water, it can dissolve the matcha properly. After you put the water into your matcha powder, then we need to waste it right. Traditionally, when we are whisking matcha, we are injecting the air into the matcha and the water. So that will create a nice mouthfeel for matcha straight up, also called ceremonial matcha, usucha. So first of all, after you add water to your matcha powder, you want to mix the water and matcha powder in a circular motion. And then you start whisking in zigzag and W motion vigorously from top to bottom left to right until a thin layer of froth forms when you are whisking try not to use your bamboo whisk to scrape the bottom of your matcha bowl because that will break the tip of your bamboo whisk always try to suspend it when you are whisking and after 20 to 30 seconds of whisking vigorously a thin layer of froth will form. And now you have a good matcha base for your latte. Okay, there you have it. Follow these four simple steps to level up your matcha game at home. Now, I went through a lot of information in a short period of time. And there's no way I can cover all the topics that I want to talk about. So make sure you like and subscribe this channel so I can make more videos like this for you. See you in the next one.